Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. And we have a couple of things we need to speak with you about. You know, as we do these predator roundups, we typically do 10 or 12 at a time. And, and what I have requested them to focus on, I'd rather do less at a time than more at a time so they can get all the time they deserve on television to show that they're mean, ugly, nasty people. In this particular case, this started out as a por child porn investigation. And as we, we were going to serve our search warrants, we found a predator, an active predator among the child pornographers. Now, as you know, this research has shown us in the past that like 85% of the child pornographers, the people who view child porn, would have sex with a child if given the opportunity or either have in the past. So let me start out with one of the most frightening, deviant people that we've seen here in a long time. His name is Ian Gad. Ian is 23 years of age. And we went to his residence in search of child porn based upon a Nick Nick tip. When we got there, what we found was 89 counts of child porn on his devices. 89 counts. But in those photographs of very young children, what did we find? We found a victim. Our investigation then led from our folks working child porn investigations to our special victims unit where this very young child had been sexually battered at least 10 times by this guy. At least 10 times. And other lewd conduct occurred between this guy and this very young child. So currently he's charged with 10 counts of capital sexual battery. The investigation is ongoing at this time. He told us during this investigation the only reason he stopped transmitting child porn was because Instagram blocked him. So Instagram not only blocked him, but they reported him to Nick Mick as is required by the federal law. I want to compliment Instagram today. Because they blocked him, because they reported him, we found a very young baby that he was actively sexually battering and, in fact, had their photograph. Now I want to trash Apple for a minute. Last year, I think they only reported 265 cases to Nick Mick, while Facebook reported like 20 million, why Instagram reports. And Apple's obviously feeling the heat because, oh, they're putting new algorithms or new systems in place so that they can better report. Well, I want the people of Apple to wonder how they would feel if this guy had have been sexually battering their very young little girl. Congratulations to Instagram for doing what was right. Because they did what was right, we stopped an ongoing activity where he was sexually battering a child. We know through our investigative techniques that this guy had groomed this little girl for over three months before engaging her in sex the first time. This is a very dangerous, very dangerous, let me say that one more time, a very dangerous child predator. He's locked up. The investigation's ongoing, and there's a chance there may be more charges. And then, of course, there's Billy 
Jordan Rose. He's charged with 38 counts of child porn. But what we noticed as we went through his different counts of child porn, his focus or his interest or the majority of things that we saw online were infants as young as in diapers. He had children up to like the age of 10 or 11, but he focused on infants. And he focused on infants that were being sexually battered he confessed to us, but this is another person who, given the opportunity, would have sexually battered your children, in our estimation, based solely on the investigative conduct that we saw of him. And then there's Christian Osorio, 33 counts of child porn and four counts of transmission. He was a sales advisor for Best Buy in Davenport. He said he'd been watching child porn since he was 16 years of age. And the last one in this particular operation is Melvin Lagos, who's 18. We charged him with 32 different counts of child porn. Most of the children in his child porn were between the ages of three and eight years old. He used and moved around on the social media platforms in order to try to keep from being identified. But of course, our detectives did an excellent job of tracking and finding him and his child porn. 32 counts. Now, as we give you these different counts, 32 counts, 38 counts, please understand that that's just the initial charges at the time of the search warrant. We've not gone through all of their different electronic devices. That will occur over the next weeks. So there's a great likelihood, because we usually, with rare exception, find additional child porn for which they'll be charged with in the future. Now, I have one more topic today, but before we get to that one, are there any questions about these child pornographers? On the first one, you said he was molesting the very young child. How old? She, we can't release her age because it would help lead to her identification. But when I tell you she's young, she's very young. He was not just molesting her. He was sexually battering her. Okay. Yes, she was. And, and he was taking videos in, addis, in addition to still shots. We can't see where he's published the videos yet. That's still under investigation. But he was videotaping himself sexually battering this very young little girl. There's not enough time or adjectives to explain my rage and frustration with someone that would do that and then to take videos and pictures. We did see the pictures online, but not the video clips yet. But I can't imagine why he wouldn't share those because it's bragging rights for these people that are deviants and that are crazy like that. Do you know we have, have confessions from, I believe, all of them, but not one of them has said whether or not they may have been sexually abused as a child. However, that doesn't excuse your conduct. That may be something that they say because it's true. We, we've known that. We've had them say that just as to try to gain sympathy from us, even when it may not have been true. So we don't put a lot of validity in that, but regardless of that, it does not give you the right to sexually attack children. And, you know, the only way I, I can explain this is it was a very young little girl. She was verbal, so she wasn't an infant, but she was a verbal and she was well aware of what happened to her.
And quite frankly, she was coached not to talk, so it was a difficult investigation. Anything else? Okay, this guy is Justin Jackson. He's 28 years old. He drives a cement truck for CMEX, or at least he did. On November 5th, at about 4.40 in the afternoon, he and three of his colleagues went to a house and broke in. They were garbed up. They had firearms to do a home invasion robbery. So they get into this house, and there are two adults and five children. Two four-year-olds, a six-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a 14-year-old. And they're in, one has a shotgun, one has a pistol, they've gotten the people at gunpoint. At one point, they pistol whipped one of the adult victims. And then one of the suspects gets on the phone, this is overheard by the victim, and says, I think we've got the wrong house. That's right. There's no drugs there. There's no money there. The victims have no criminal record. These ding a -lings got the wrong house to do the home invasion robbery. They're not going to be considered for a prize, and we certainly don't want them working for Amazon delivering packages. That's, but they actually did an armed home invasion of the wrong house terrorizing these folks. They were driving a 2020 model vehicle, which, hmm, that's a clue. The other three we believe to be black males. Between five foot, nine, and six foot, they left the house in the 2020 Nissan Sentra. We don't know who they are so far. Justin's not talking. But Justin was the getaway driver. He also went into the house during the robbery. So he's locked up, and we're looking for his three accomplices at this time. If somebody will call us, Crime Stoppers, 1-800-226-TIPS, well, I say us, Crime Stoppers is not part of the Sheriff's Office, but if you'll call Crime Stoppers, tell us who his accomplishments are. You can have some cash for Christmas. Santa Claus will bring it to you. And these guys will go to jail with their buddy here. But right now, Justin, who wants to keep his mouth shut, hey, that's cool. If you want to keep your mouth shut, you're going to go to prison for a very long time. See if your, uh, your friends that helped you rob the wrong house will bring you something to, like, eat in jail, put some money in your canteen when you go to prison. Be a nice thing. After all, you all went to their own house. These children in the home, these two adults, you pistol whip. And, of course, they take something. They take a video game. Hey, you're there. You might as well take something. So they did. They didn't even, if they entered and backed out, it's still a crime, but it sure looks a lot better before the jury. They went ahead through, even after they discovered it was the wrong place and robbed anyway. Wrong house, no drugs. No money, innocent people robbed at gunpoint in a home invasion robbery. I'm very proud of my detectives. We've got this guy in jail, and we're going to find the others. That's why we encourage people to call Crime Stoppers. We're going to find them sooner or later. You might as well make money because they're going to jail. Anything else? Any questions on this one? Did they get anything other than the one video game? They did all that for one video game. One video game is all they stole. I guess they figured, hey, we're here, we might as well steal something. We've, we've broken into these innocent people's house. We've 
you know, crack the one guy in the head with a gun, we'll go ahead and steal something. Yeah, just a few minutes ago, we received information of a, a deputy involved shooting. And what we know at this moment in time, it involved a stolen vehicle. Well, our lieutenant, who is assigned to the Mulberry Station, is uh, Lieutenant Rhodes, spotted the vehicle and stopped it. And there was a confrontation. And and the guy was shot. He shot in, as I understand, maybe in the hip and in the leg. That's all the preliminary information I have. When I leave here, I'm going to go out there. They should have a better briefing for me. The person suspect we shot, he is at the hospital right now being treated. Certainly he's expected to survive. At least that's the initial information. He just took a shot to the hip and to the leg. But he resisted the arrest, I'm told, and I'm not too sure what all occurred there yet. But he fled the scene in the stolen vehicle and we called him just after he was shot. And I'm waiting on information. I'm hesitant to give you more details. I've got I've got preliminary information, but details are sketchy in the heat of the moment so and it just occurred just a few minutes ago so I'm going to run out there and I'll have more details for you later on. Do you know if he's armed yet? With a car that I'm sure of that was stolen and I, I think that he had her pinned up in the car but I I'm hesitant to say that until I get more details but I the initial information which is subject to change as soon as I get there is he was, she was fighting with him. He was getting the best of her. And he had her pinned between the open door and the vehicle when she shot him. So it appears that he was at least armed with a huge weapon, and that was a vehicle. And he was determined to get away. And we were determined that he wasn't going to get away, and he didn't get away. So we're at the hospital with him now. He should have rethought his actions. He could have gone to jail a much easier way than he's going to jail now. But I will have details. And once again, anything I've given you right now is like really preliminary and it's subject to modification. And I'm certain it will be by the time we get the rest of the stories. OK? What's the, what's the location that you're going to? I don't know. Mulberry. I got a guy here that's going to drive me. It's called my chief of staff. He's got all the details. I'm going to get in the car. He's going to drive me there. So it's Mulberry, but hey, if you get to Mulberry, it's not going to be hard to find it. I'm certain because we have a lot of vehicles there. We, we'll get you the address. Okay. This just happened. Yeah, thank you. See you all in a few minutes. Bye.